Yes, greetings, yes. This is the energy being or vibration you call Hilarion. A moment, please, while we make deeper contact. Many of the questions today are those that are about the future. And one can say with some degree of certainty that to the extent to which you find a question like this, who or what is experiencing me, us, this, right now, to the extent to which you find that question uncomfortable and difficult, then it can be a little easier to ask other questions, such as what will happen in such and such, or what about the coming such and that? But as you come to understand this, you can also recognize that in the now, in the answering of this question, as it is a personal answer for you, comes a different answer. An answer that if you keep on asking it, if you keep finding your way into it, if you keep welcoming it, those other questions, those ones about the future, seem to have a little less hold on you. They are a little less fear-provoking. With this, we must put out then the possibility that a great deal of the, well, brouhaha about these issues of the future for humanity is being put forth specifically to engender fear, to keep you away from looking inside for your own answers, to keep you in this position where you look outside for help. The first level of this, so obvious, is when you look outside in a time frame. At such and such time, all of these things will occur, and that is what is going to provide all of this, which is missing, sense of security, sense of love, opportunity to feel safe, and all of that. Well, of course you understand that those are internal experiences, and you will never be able to derive those from the external. Yet, it is in this opportunity to welcome, to find this in yourself, to find any way possible through this, that those questions are encouraged. And so you have this way in which, as if through opposite expression, both through the encouragement of fear and the encouragement of deeper inquiry, such questions are being strengthened within humanity's consciousness, more so now than ever. This is particularly available, particularly now in the Northern Hemisphere, in this time because the group consciousness is better connected. The opportunity to reach out, not because the night is longer, but because people have this deeply within their own, well, you could call it a cycle or clock or year clock, that this is that time of the energy that is associated with the group. Earth has this too. We have often likened the changing of the seasons to Earth's breathing. You could say that in the time of the solstice, that uh, the Earth's cycle is fully unbalanced at the level of the complete in-breath or the complete out-breath, depending whether you are looking at it from northern or southern hemisphere perspective. And that is also true. For those uh, hearing our words, though, hold this now as the, as the moment in which all of a sudden we're going to draw in wonderful, uh, delightful sort of sense of being, of connectedness, not because of a process, not because something's doing to you anything or to the world, but simply because you choose it. This is the real meaning, you see, of 2012, of this turning of ages and cycles. It is not nearly so much about that which is external, the uh, alignment uh, with uh, particular planets, uh, uh, galaxies, uh, and energies of the center of this galaxy, so very far away, and all of that. As much as it is the collective consciousness, that people agree that at that time, all of these energies will then be available. And so a few people, looking at the nature of how the uh, calendar of the Mayan and the uh, Gregorian have overlapped, have questioned what is the timing on this? Here you see then an answer. 
emerges. It is that which is agreed upon in the collective consciousness more than it is that of any actual thing. Because if you actually do this carefully with the mathematics, you would see that that which is all ascribed to what the Mayans consider and people now have alluded to as uh, December 21st, 2012 is that of December 21st, 2010, right now, right here. But does right now, right here have a different meaning in the context of what we've already been talking about? That really that energy which you welcome, that which is in your being, that is that which is available to you, is right here, right now, simply because you have chosen it to be. So it would actually be a very good thing if you could somehow choose right here, right now, tomorrow, and the next day, and so on. That simply means for you that you are welcoming being here, being present, being aware. But the collective consciousness does not work that way. The collective consciousness, that of the majority of human beings on your planet, have an agreed sort of thing that if they are looking to the future, if they are interested in that which is called this turning of the ages or that which is the shift into another age or shift into another way of being all the rest of it, many, many, many of them have all agreed that this is going to occur in about two years, in the time around the middle of December of 2012 and so on. And so therefore, really the question is, why wait? Why if that which is, why that which you see as a beautiful thing, a helpful thing and so on, could be then useful to you? Why not choose it now? The beautiful thing about the nature of this collective consciousness is that the majority of humanity is not involved. A few people are, uh, a few percent perhaps, and this will likely increase as that time approaches. But for most people, it is going to be that which is an interesting sideline and of no direct value. Of course, what is going to occur then is in the election time, the uh, bringing of a, another president, a great focus of energy in USA on such energies as that of uh, presidential shift, change in power, and all of those things. And this will probably be seen by more individuals as a little more important. But in that time that is to come, this opportunity of people who share energies has a rather interesting uh, uh, sort of uh, parallel. One can see so many times in the past where energy has been built up to this and uh, uh, a particular change such as harmonic convergence, such as the turning into uh, the year 2000, uh, such as other important times in humanity's uh, past. And the interesting thing is that those people who are most likely to be powerfully touched by this and most interested in it, go through that time period. On the other side of it, most of them, unaffected uh, or affected only slightly, do not throw it all away. They do not say we were led down some sort of yellow brick road and we must jettison new thought or new age ideas. Rather, they simply recognize one of two pathways. One is that they get the lesson. They understand that those energies that they developed, thinking of a particular time in the future, was helpful to them. That those energies they developed were helpful in their meditations, in their preparation. Those are things they can build on and are energies of helping others, of interacting in the world in a more conscious and clear way, perhaps, or things that were available to them because of this sense of preparation. Other individuals, however, uh, not really understanding all of this, simply make a leap, usually within a few days, but sometimes within a few months, to another time. And there are already individuals right now talking about important dates in 2015. And uh, at this stage, this may seem a little odd to you. Some would even find it humorous. But there is within the collective consciousness an energy that is always looking forward to some time in which something of a precarious, important, profound, or transformative nature will happen to you. Now, when you understand the point of that, that it can be helpful in preparation, but at some point 
the soul recognizes in clarity what this is really about, about now, about awakening something in you, about asking if that time was now, how would I be different? What would I be doing? How would I shift my own consciousness? What could I contribute if I knew that whatever there was significant about that time was occurring now? Now, there are those who would say that that is not only a useful exercise, but is actually part of the 2012 energy. And for this, we heartily agree that by its very nature, it has begun a new cycle. If you can follow us with this, it's a bit of a stretch, but that which is to occur could be conceived of as that which is occurring. And it is creating waves in time. And those waves are rippling back in time to right now. And in particular, from this time beginning at uh, December 21st, 2010, until that time of December 21st of 2012. These energies intensify, solidify, become tangible, are more available, are those which can have more profound effect on everyone. In other words, from here on out, you can say that when you are feeling a wave of energy, you are feeling the 2012 wave. How could we possibly make such a statement in light of our emphasis on the present? And that is where you understand that we are not in a position to criticize the consciousness that needs to have the sense of a future projection in order to access awareness now. We do not criticize this, we simply accept it. And we do so with one particular important analogy for you. You would at times criticize those who project the image of a religious deity, of a particular mode of thought, of Sharia law in one religion, or Catholic law in another, or particular ways through fear of enforcing militaristic rule in another, and so on and so forth. It is as if, by this analogy, we are reminding you, you have a bit of this too. As limited as it may seem in your thinking, the opportunity to project your consciousness to that which would seem beyond your ability to touch, to know, to work with in a conscious way here and now. After all, where is 2012? You can't point to it. You can't even say which direction it's in. You can't even recognize it for that which could in any way be tangible, just as all of these other aspects of religion or politics or belief show up for people. It simply points out to you one of the first important tenets in this question about clarity. In finding clarity, it is important to recognize that which stands in the way of this, that which is actually as humans have called it for millennia, superstition. Now what is that except that which is a belief that the mind is able to wrap around for an ulterior motive, for the purpose of reducing fear, having more love, bringing great luck, or whatever it is within your own culture or religion that draws you into superstition. And this, at the fundamental level, in the way in which the animal brain works has a purpose, of course. It is simply an extension of the old ways. When you would eat purple berries and they made you sick, then you would know, stay away from purple berries. Hence the beginning of superstition. You do not understand it. You do not have the technology at that stage in your own development. You simply know, stay away from purple berries. And at that point, you will certainly be more likely to survive because you can transmit this to your children and their children until nobody even understands why they don't wear purple anymore. The whole point of it, though, is not about that of the thing anymore. It simply is that of the way in which the brain is allowing you this opportunity to grab onto something in order to correct a condition that you recognize needs some shift. And the clarity, then, is not just in the resistance to the superstition, but asking the inquiry, looking deeper, what is it about this that I need? What sense of belonging 
do I really want here? What energy gives me a sense of greater safety, or love, or companionship? What is it that I really want from this? If I had the experience I was most interested in having as a result of my understanding of 2012, what would that look like? What would it feel like? Where would it land in my body? And can you give yourself that experience right here, right now, to the fullness of your ability?